My healthy habits. Surprise is the only We're emotion an that requires an interpretation. Oh, wherever we go. But the real choice we, go we can change this is what life can do. Thank you. Happiness and fear come with the neurological signals to approach or avoid. Yet surprise is the only emotion that requires an interpretation. And it's this unique and underappreciated characteristic that gives us an opportunity to hack the human belief system. So today I'm going to offer you a life hack. How to dramatically and instantly enrich someone's life. And all it takes is some amazing science, attention to detail, and some artful timing. But first, I want you to use your imagination. I want you to imagine that you're driving a car and you look over beside you and the car beside you suddenly hovers, scoots over the traffic, lands safely on the other side and drives away. You'd be surprised. <laughs> now physiologically, your eyes might have flown open wide and your jaw might have dropped. Neurologically, you just experienced a burst of dopamine. Cognitively, you instantly stopped what you were thinking and doing. You maybe even panicked. Oh my God, what's going on here? And then you instantly formed a new belief. Cars can hover. But you didn't form this belief intentionally. It happened to you. You can't stop it, you can't ignore it, and you can't undo it. You now have a new belief. Now surprises to beliefs about hover cars make interesting dinner conversation. But that's about it. But surprises to beliefs we hold about ourselves can be defining and formative. So now that you know what a surprise-driven belief formation looks like, what does a surprise-driven formative event look like? Well, think about Samantha. Samantha used to think that her shyness was a weakness. That is, until one day when her swim coach named her captain of the swim team. He told the team, she may be shy, but when she talks, you're going to want to listen. Since that surprise comment, she now feels quietly powerful. And then there's Donna. Due to her inability to spell well, she used to worry about her intellectual ability to succeed in graduate school. Then one day, a professor said, spelling is not a sign of intelligence. That comment smashed her low self-assessment. And she entered graduate school confidently, and then later succeeded. And then there's Lori. Lori used to feel ungraceful and odd-looking until one day when she overheard her aunt talking to her mother and describing her as exotic looking. Since then, she embraces her physical differences and sees them as strengths. Now we all have these surprise-driven formative events. We just don't remember them or recognize them because we're not used to thinking of surprise that way. I have studied formative events for over three decades now. I have looked at thousands and thousands of stories and analyzed them very carefully. Now, most people who study formative events look at, how does this happen? Well, I discovered that the better question might be, when? And the answer to when is often during a moment of surprise. Now, curiously enough, scientists have now located the element of surprise. Yep. <laughs> there it is. So, if surprise is so important, can we operationalize it? Can we learn to use it strategically to intentionally enrich someone's life? Yes, we can. But before we look at the science of surprise, you need to know what a formative event is. The formative part is the formation of a new belief. Now, our beliefs define us. They make us unique. We see the world and we operate in it according to our beliefs. For instance, if you believe you are attractive and you walk into a party, you will perceive every casual glance cast your way as a sign of admiration. <laughs> but if you believe you are unattractive, you will walk into that very same party and you will perceive those very same casual glances cast your way as a sign of aversion. And all this takes place automatically, often below our conscious radar. 
And herein lies a really important characteristic about beliefs we hold about ourselves. While we instinctively question our beliefs about hover cars and events in the concrete and, and external world, we automatically affirm beliefs we hold about ourselves. Now our beliefs, once formed, are amazingly resilient. Just try to get somebody to change their political beliefs. But the actual formation of a belief is a different matter altogether. The actual formation often takes place instantly, and here's where surprise plays a key role. Now, you'd be surprised if Beyonce walked out on stage. You'd be surprised if you saw a panda in the lobby. You'd be surprised if that friend who you thought was in Europe suddenly showed up at your dinner party. Now, these events would surprise you, but they wouldn't change you very much. But what if you believed you lacked leadership skills and your supervisor walked up to you and said, hey, Bob, your ability to pay attention to detail makes you an excellent leader. I'm putting you in charge of the West Division. That surprise comment just might change how you feel about yourself. A formative moment. So what is it about a surprise that makes it hackable? What is it about a surprise that requires an interpretation? Well, it's because surprise is essentially a neurological error signal. It's your brain telling you that how you understand the world, how you expect events to unfold, suddenly don't work. Now, to our ancestors, surprises usually meant imminent danger or immense opportunity. Those that thought about it perished. <laughs> so we have an evolutionary heritage. We are hardwired to learn instantly during a moment of surprise. Now, during a moment of surprise, we get this neurological burst of dopamine. That's our motivator neurotransmitter. It knows that something really important is happening. It just doesn't know whether it's positive or negative. And it's this burst of dopamine that lays the fertile ground for incoming information. And that's the reason we can hack the human belief system. Now, there are many ways to strategically trigger surprise. I'll give you my favorite, and that is to name what somebody thinks is a weakness is actually an asset. So, for example, many of you serve in a supervisory capacity. Imagine that you have an employee who doesn't think she learns the protocols very quickly. Call her into your office. She will be nervous, and she will expect criticism. Surprise her instead. Say, your ability to learn your protocols so thoroughly makes you a valued employee. Have a nice day. <laughs> now, it's, it's really important that you move on. Start dialing your phone, open up a file, usher her to the door. <laughs> that part's important. Now, at first glance, this may look like a simple affirmative statement. And if it were just that, that would be fine. But now that you know a little bit more about surprise, let's take a closer look. If you surprised her, you immediately hijacked her attention. And she has to make sense of that. Hmm. He says, I learned my protocols thoroughly. Do I learn my protocols thoroughly? Hell yeah, he said so. <laughs> now, she accepts the comment because it was said genuinely and authentically, like an objective fact similar to, you have blue eyes. Now, this part is important. You're not giving praise. Praise can sound phony and manipulative, while declarative facts seem to carry their own conviction. When you set out to enrich somebody's life, was a surprise comment. You may or may not see immediate results. You're setting seeds that may take years to flourish. It's not like you can walk up to her and say, so when was it that you first noticed that you began to learn your protocols so thoroughly? And she could answer that question. As far as she knows, she's been doing it all along. Her boss just told her. She can't even remember her prior belief, and that's what surprise does. 
So, if you're a teacher and you have a student who is frozen with the fear of making mistakes, catch that student making a mistake. They will be surprised and they will expect criticism. Surprise that student instead and say, your eagerness to make your mistakes so willingly makes you a strong learner. Now get out of there, you're just stating the facts. <laughs> if you surprise that student, they got a burst of dopamine and they have to make sense of that. So now when they make those inevitable mistakes, they get a little hit of dopamine, the motivator neurotransmitter, which says, fight on because you're a strong learner. And that is the signal feature of a growth mindset. So as you can guess, when I give my talks on surprise, many people ask me, so what was the biggest surprise in your life? Well, oddly enough, it happened just the other day. I was having a little disagreement with my wife, and at the end of it, she looked at me and she said, you might be right. Humor works in many ways because of the element of surprise. Comedians use surprise strategically all the time, and you can too, to be the creator of richer lives. And here's a little bonus. Now that you know how surprise works, you get to enjoy them, but you no longer fall prey to the instant beliefs that follow. You get to become the true architect of your belief system. So, the most important role you can serve in life is to positively enrich someone else's life and watch them flourish. So take what you learned here today and make others' lives richer. But don't always smile while you're doing it. One of the ways to trigger surprise is to not smile or not be impressed when that response is expected. Thank you.